You know, I I guess so. It's been a while, but here he is once again. So the last time that Pixie made sort of a big splash in the bracket would be at the Winter Championship 2023. He's going to open this one up, put some damage out onto Machete, but he got ninth place. And I'm going to have to look at the bracket. I believe he maybe came through the elimination side of the bracket for that. Uh, because he did, yeah, he came in ninth place, so right outside of top eight. He's now going up against the winner of that very tournament on a legend he probably doesn't have a lot of experience with. This one's going to be really tough for Kixxay. Yeah, I mean, at least just as you said earlier, Lucian does have a bit more defense than your average legend. That is going to help against the enormous strength stat of Tezka. And I, I really love the map pick here. Because a lot of people that I've seen, you know, they end up fighting Tezka on like small brawl haven or something. That's an eight strength legend. That is absolutely wild. The knockouts are going to happen so early. So here, at least on Apocalypse, you get to burn it all the way through to true red. That they come in and already throwing out some of those signatures. Now they did get a nerf, as we talked about in the pre-show, in their fixed force so that's gonna hurt the sort of early game ko potential or at least the setup into that sort of early game ko potential great neutral air coming out from kixay very safe move when you're playing blasters to throw out on the edge you should be ready to spam that if your opponent starts to make a move towards you Ooh, delight dash jump recovery kixay has got those on deck evens up the stock count but he does have quite the damage deficit to play through he still is in a pretty good spot. I believe that hit might have turned him red. We'll see the hit Machete gets, whether or not he's actually in that red. Yes, he is looking for those vertical KOs. Kixe being very careful. Oh, man. He wants to initiate, sent over to the edge. Machete setting up for the edge guard. Nice little bounce pass there. Goes over, grabs the gauntlets. Kind of playing a little floaty here. Almost reaches out. Man, Kixay has been just shy of all these initiations. And Machete just playing like right back at his shoulder blades, getting behind so many of these attacks. Nice two piece there. Gets another hit. Oh, the final hits of that made it over the corner. He's continuing to just add this damage up. It's no like major, I'm going to knock you out, edge guard but it is just its damage when Kixay was already basically a full stock behind. Now more than a full stock behind, still adding that damage up. Okay. Ooh, ooh, As let's nice go Kixay. Almost, he almost got the slab, TWK. Man, he is hunting for it. He's gotten a lot of unanswered hits, but now Machete starting to fight back. He built himself enough of a lead that just that, that little bit of attrition, just the, the chip damage over and over again could spell doom for Kixay in short order this one back though he's certainly making it interesting as the weapon control machete is going to be disarmed throws out that neutral life in the middle of the stage another one that should yep gives him enough room but Ooh. he picked up the weapon then got caught by the delight into the recovery so kixay is going to have weapon control yet again swapping back over are we just going to see oh he's actually able to pick those up in time i thought he might have gotten hit out of it yeah machete did knock him off the stage with that wake up attack that's something that you've got to remember Machete may not respect those guitar strings, certainly not in game one, as he takes the victory with a full stock to boot. But that was overall a less dominating game than I expected. I expected oh, yeah. it to go a little bit more quickly. I'll be able to see on, on the replay what the actual timestamp was by the time the final KO came through, or maybe not, as they're moving to this one pretty quickly. Okay, so that was around a three and a half minute game. Even though it was, it wasn't a JV2, but it was a full, he had that full uh, one stock to go. But I expected maybe some more speed coming out from it. I think that is a testament to how Kixay is playing defensively against these boots when Machete has them. It's not just a stomp, he's not running all over the place. It's not necessarily too much for Kixay to handle to where he's just completely overwhelmed. He's doing a good job. Yeah, it's, it's in a lot of these small situations that Machete's really just been getting the better of him here and there. Just playing it in close, tight. Oh, wow. So many recoveries. It, it, kicks I just couldn't land, and he was taking damage all the time. He was getting juggled so much. I felt like I was going to, like, 2019 hammer. Okay. 
Kicksay with the ground pound, expecting the dodge to come through from Machete when it did. So by moving up, throwing at that ground pound, oh, he actually got that was through beautiful. the dodge. The dodge was done, but Machete with big answer back, gets the KO off the bottom, has his choice of weapons, sticking with the gauntlets, going with the gauntlets here. There's the two piece, try to get it with the three, hits the weapon toss and the fourth hit on the boots. All right, let's see if he can get as much of a uh, edge guard as he did last time. It was only the one recovery, so Kixay has been finding better routes back onto stage. Uh-oh, just, just a little bit of that stage. soft dunk there. Oh, dude, the juggles are so good. It seems like Kixay is a little bit afraid to throw his weapon whenever he's like trying to land back Ooh. on the stage. That was one thing that led to so many of the juggles that we saw earlier. Now we're starting to see him do it a little bit more. But you got to think when the Katars are in his hand, his range with the neutral air, a standard like falling Katar option, that's not really going to have the range to deal with Machete's recoveries or even really Machete's nares. So he's afraid to throw those weapons away because it is Katars. He doesn't have a lance in hand. He doesn't have spear. Oh, wait it's a minute. A wait a minute. Oh, okay. Is denied, but some solid damage was done. But say that's going to send him off screen. Yeah, I absolutely love the reads that were happening there. He was on the wall. He knew Machete wanted to go for that, you know, just the, the blitz ground pound maybe the down airs the way that he's been spiking kicks a all set so far and kicks a had the answer he was going to dip around behind and get that down air of his own he's going to need some crazy read play like that to make this up because once again machete finds himself with a full stock lead over kicks a machete just kind of throwing out attacks that could get him into trouble Still has a long way to go before he's really in danger zone whatsoever. So, I mean, he can still afford to just kind of throw out attacks and really put uh, the fear into Kixay, especially because Kixay's on bus stock, now officially in the yellow. Ooh, Kixay gets the better of that weapon exchange. Machete unarmed for a little bit, but he's so good at just getting behind Kixay. Ceiling just a little too tall to f finish that off. That's going to be a little bit of that low strength. I think if, if yeah. he's playing a five strength legend or higher, that might have KO'd at that point. But he's still definitely keep himself in this one. That GCD light into the recovery was very nice. Great spot dodge there to get through the weapon toss. That would have set oh. each guard. And he grabs the D light into the recovery. So Kixay, he's not giving this one up without a fight whatsoever. Going to go back over to the Kataris. He has struggled a little bit for range here against the boots, though. You know, I, I, I've i got to say this. I love the consistency on Kixay for the down light dash jump recovery because we've seen so many top players in high pressure situations, that one can slip away from them. But Kixay's hit every single one. Unfortunately, Machete going up 2-0 will not be deterred. And Kixay pretty heavily on the back foot here. It looks like he's trying to figure out what legend he wants to choose. Maybe he's just taking a moment for a breather. If he has more in his legend stable that he's been playing, recently. I don't think you can take an old favorite out and expect too much success from it, but if he has something else that he's been practicing recently, I don't think the Lucian is necessarily the best pick, and yes, we are getting a legend swap here. It is going to be the moon and coming out for Kixay. Oh, wow. Okay, so no shared weapons, fully changing over to the bow and the scythe. So this does give him Again, a, a good amount of range for engagement, similar to what you'd be seeing on the blasters, so that way the bow can come in with the down lights. Uh, but Scythe, um, I guess the dodge reads a little bit similar to those he was getting with the Katars. We're just hoping that those are really going to pop off. Yeah, I think that range difference here with both of his weapons is going to feel a lot better in dealing with Machete. I think he's going to be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe or even outright beat the range that Machete has with the boots and then definitely with the gauntlets. Right now, damage build definitely going the way of Machete. Every hit that Kixay is getting, Machete is getting at least two or three instead. Ooh! Able to get through that one. Throws out the down signature right over the corner. There is a weapon spawn on the field. I'm not sure neither player wants to be disarmed or they're just happy with what they have right now. Down air is going to send Machete over to the side. Kixay had the time to swap over to the bow if he wanted to, so I think he definitely wants the sword here. Or sorry, the sight. 
Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a great signature kit. Unfortunately, that weapon toss didn't find purchase, so Kixe is unarmed. And Machete continuing the weapon starve. Machete has been really uh, not hesitant at all to swap weapons. There it is, the big grapple, tossing him off screen. That's stock number one in just about a minute. And Machete, you know, he's still got a little bit to go before threatened to be knocked out. Kixay going very low. That's a uh -oh. dodge. He's going to have to be careful. He's playing really low here. I think Machete doesn't want to get caught in a bad situation. He knows it will take a lot to actually knock out Kixay there, so it's just probably not worth it. Happens to side air the wrong way. He was so close. He just had to make the guess in that split second decision. But Kixay's highest level legend is going to be a Mordex, so has plenty of time on the scythe. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, not enough time on the scythe because now it's out of his hands. Over to the bow we go. Now, one thing Chete will have is a lot of moves that actually just kind of hop him just a little bit of the ground. Oh, geez. Ooh, that is likely going to be it. Yep, that's the stock. Kixe on final stock now. But something Machete will have is several moves that like hop him up just a little bit off the ground. So if Kixe really wants to play the range game with the bow in hand, goes in for that downlight, Chete could just throw a move out to get over that, or if he's just throwing a move out in the first place, and Kixe happens to, th to throw out a downlight as initiation at the same time, but Jet can just hop right over that and avoid it. Doesn't have to burn a jump, doesn't have to burn a dodge. Yeah, and we find ourselves once again Kixay spends so much time disarmed because Machete has dodged every single one of his weapon throws. He hasn't really been able to get too much off of it. And Machete's weapon starve is so, just so refined. Finally, we get the kill for the KO. Now Kixay swapping over onto the scythe. His main weapon of choice here, the stronger the two weapons, the weapon he has the most experience on. Neutral light going in, he's stuck low. There's that recovery, even that sent high. That not gonna KO just yet. Ooh, went for the down air, hoping to end it there, but the down light into recovery, and that's a swift 3-0 for Machete over Kixen. Machete gonna be feeling real good after that. We saw so many different things from the Tezka kit come out and have success. We saw signatures on both weapons do very well, even including a signature KO. Of course, we saw strong edge guards. We saw that amazing juggle from the neutral airs, from the recoveries on the boots from Machete. We are seeing virtually every reason why he wants to play this legend. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And I, I, I think the similarities between the gauntlet and the boots kits work really well for him just continuing to rotate through those weapons, kind of keep the opponents on their heels, 